There really is nothing more American than owning your own home, right? Like that is the American dream or always has been really is owning your own home. However, though, I would actually argue that here in the United States, we're a little bit different when it comes to that because in nowhere else in the world, um, even in the modern world, um, do as many people own their own homes as they do here in the United States. And, you know, that can be talked up to many different things. You know, that homeownership isn't as affordable in other countries as it here is here in the United States. And so there are lots of reasons for um, us sort of being the leaders in that. But there's also a lot of confusion around owning your own home and buying your own home. I mean, mortgages can be really complicated and figuring out, you know, the ins and outs of buying a home is hard, right? It's very hard. Not to mention the fact that a lot of Americans seem to keep changing their homes like they change their underwear. I'm just saying, I've known so many friends um, and family members who it's like, almost, it's almost like, it's almost like when you go and you trade in a car every two years, right? It's like, they keep doing that with their home. They keep upgrading like every three years, the, the size of their home. Um, and with that, of course, the mortgage and everything else. And I'm not judging anyone, by the way, but I'm just merely stating that um, even though owning your own home is still sort of like, I guess the pivotal of, or the epitome of the American dream. Um, I would argue that it's not really like the only thing. I would argue that it's actually not as special as it once was just because of the fact that not only are some people buying homes, but so many people are almost like they don't even know what they really want out of their home. It's like they buy a home and they just stay in it for a little bit and then they end up finding another home that they like more. And so it's like we just keep kind of changing it around instead of staying in our homes for a long period of time like our grandparents would have done. If you're new here, my name is Jesse Fearon. Um, we are a family of five living off just my husband's income and we are 100% debt free, which does include our home. And we have been through the whole mortgage process um, when we bought this home in May of 2018. 11, we took out a mortgage for it. So um, we do have some experience with mortgages. I don't want to say that I'm the most well-versed person in uh, taking on mortgages, but um, I have taken on a mortgage and I have paid off a mortgage. So I do have some experience. And so the purpose of this video is to go through all of the nitty gritty details on buying a home. Um, this video is going to be very information heavy. Um, I also actually wrote this out in the form of a blog post as well that's linked in the description of this video so you can head to my blog and read it um, if you would prefer instead of just having to listen to me talk about it the whole time. Um, but like I said, this is going to be very information heavy. I'm trying to give you as much information as possible. Um, so then that way you can, uh, you are educated and you can do your own research. Because in fact, anytime one of my readers asks me what my a biggest piece of advice for someone who is trying to buy a home for the first time, it is to research research, research, and research some more. And I don't just mean the home that you're buying, because you certainly absolutely should research the home that you're buying, but also research the different mortgage options available to you. Do not allow your broker to tell you what mortgage makes sense for you. Because here's the thing, your broker, they are not in charge of your money. You are. And if you're not careful, you could get talked into a very bad mortgage deal. I've had lots of friends who got sucked into horrible mortgages before. Um, and they're, they're very hard and very difficult to get out of. And so that's why I just want to tell you that don't just go by what your broker says. You know, that's not to hate on brokers because brokers are good people. I'm just saying like, don't just take their word for it. Do your own research, educate yourself to figure out what options are best for you. So that way you can make the best decision for you and for your family. So to start off, we are going to talk about the different mortgage options that are typically available. So um, we are going to first start with the ARM mortgages. The ARM mortgages are adjustable rate mortgages. Um, these mortgages kind of, I mean, they're, they're really, no, these are just awful. They're, there's nothing good about these mortgages. If you hear somebody talking about an adjustable rate mortgage or you hear, um, you know, someone saying a, an ARM mortgage or something like that, just run away from them. Um, the idea behind the ARM mortgage is that you're paying a lower interest rate up front. Um, typically when, you know, maybe you're just starting out 
out in your career, this is how they usually sell you on it. You know, your entry level position at whatever job you have. And so their argument is, oh, well, in a couple of years, you're going to be getting, you'll have a better pay raise and blah, 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 blah. So you can afford to pay the, the, to pay more interest later on. And so they'll have a much lower interest rate to begin with, like, but then the interest rate builds up over time. And so you end up with this really huge, you can, you can end up with a really huge mortgage payment in the end. Um, and they are pretty difficult to get out of. So I would just highly recommend that you run away from these, <laughs> but again, do your own research. Um, but that those mortgages are called adjustable rate mortgages are also known as arm mortgages, like your arm. The other the other mortgage option are interest only loans. I'm going to be honest with you. These didn't make sense to me even when I was going to school for my accounting degree. I never understood why you would take out a loan for just the interest. Like it, like they don't make any sense to me at all because you spend years, you'll, you will spend years of your, uh, of living in your home, just paying the interest on your loan. Like not even the principal, you're not going to be making any progress towards paying the principal you will just be paying the interest. And I don't know about you, but I don't really want to spend years just giving the money, just giving my money to the bank in the form of interest and not making any headway on paying down the principal because eventually I don't want to owe the bank any money, right? So I don't think interest-only loans make sense. Maybe you do, but I would, I would highly recommend you stay away from those. And like I said, the ARM mortgages as well. All right, then we move on to conventional loans. These loans are, um, these are the most well-known loans because they've been around for a really long time. Um, they are not backed by the government and you are normally going, you are usually with these types of loans going to have to put down um, anywhere between 10 and 20% um, on these loans in order to even get these loans. Um, and they are available in 15 and 30 year uh, mortgages. Now, 20% is really the amount of money that you would want to put down on a home anyways. Um, this would make sure that you don't have to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. Um, I'll explain more about that in just a second. Um, but again, with these loans, you are going to typically have to put down a much higher down payment than you would with an FHA loan. And an FHA loan is a loan that is um, backed by the government. And this, these are loans that are sold to first-time home buyers um, quite frequently. And this is actually the loan that we had. And FHA stands for Federal Housing Administration. So these are HUD-backed loans. Um, and the reason these are so popular with first-time home buyers is because of the fact that you um, can put down very little money. Um, typically, the down payment is about 3.5% um, of the value of the home. Um, that's actually how much we had to put down um, for our home here was the 3.5% as well for the FHA loan. And then, of course, there are VA loans, which are handled by um, the Veterans Affair, Veteran Affair Office affairs office. I can't talk today. Obviously to get this loan, you're going to have to be, um, uh, you know, a member of, uh, the military or previous member of the military. I wouldn't say that these loans are good or bad. Um, I do know that with these loans, a lot of times you can, you can get away with, um, putting very little to even no money down on a home. Um, but there, there is this thing called a funding fee. Um, so I would highly encourage you that if you're planning to take out a VA loan, that you do your research on the funding fee, um, for the VA loans. Um, cause I have heard some horror stories about them. They can be pretty high apparently. Um, again, I'm not a vet. My husband's not a vet, so I don't, I don't know. Um, I have no experience with this personally, but um, I just know that the funding fee can be very expensive. And so it's something that you definitely want to research and check out for yourself um, because it depends on how many VA loans you've taken in the past, how long your um, military service was for. Um, and I've heard too that, um, you know, it, depending on to how you were discharged, um, like if there was just maybe some weird stuff with that, like it could impact um, this as well. So again, do your own research. But those are the um, mortgage options that are available. And so I wanted to talk to you as well about PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. Um, you will have to pay this if you do, if you put down less than 20% of the home's value. Um, we had to pay PMI. I will tell you it was the biggest pain in the rear end to get off of our mortgage. And a lot of times to get it off your mortgage, um, you might have to refinance, which of course refinancing has its own cost associated with it. Cause, um, so if you were not already aware, refinancing is not free. Um, refinancing does cost money. So please keep that in mind. Um, 
you know, if you are looking to refinance a home, it's not free. Um, but a lot of times you may have to end up refinancing your home in order to get PMI off. Um, we, when we calculated out our cost on how much it was going to cost us to refinance our mortgage at that time, um, versus just paying the PMI, um, until it was going to roll off because it was expected to roll off within the next 10 months. And so once we did the math, we realized that it was significantly cheaper just to keep paying the PMI than to go and pay, um, the refinancing fee in order to refinance our mortgage. And so I just want, and so I point that, and so I point that out to you because I want you to make sure that in all of these decisions that you are doing the actual math, that you are not just relying on other people to tell you, um, what, you know, how this is going to play out for you, you know, look up amortization tables, um, which is a fancy calculator. There's several free online, um, look all these things up and educate yourself and do the math yourself instead of just relying on someone else to tell you, um, what you can afford because, you know, if we had relied on Wells Fargo to tell us what we could afford, um, they were trying to sell us on refinancing. Of course they were because they were going to get thousands of dollars more from us, from us refinancing than if we just kept paying the PMI for the next 10 months. So we just paid the PMI for the next 10 months. We never had to change out our mortgage or anything like that because then PMI came off, but it also saved us thousands of dollars from not having to refinance. So again, just do your own math, educate yourself do your own research. All right. So let's talk about earnest money. Um, when you are going and you're looking for homes to buy, you might end up hearing about earnest money. Earnest money is sort of like good faith money. It's money that you're giving, um, as sort of like a deposit on the house. Like you're saying like, Hey, I really, really, really love this house. I want this house. Like I'm going to give you earnest money. Um, so that way you know that I actually am serious. I want this house. Um, and all of that. Uh, we did that actually when we bought this house, our house was a foreclosure. Um, and so because our house was a foreclosure at that time when we bought it in 2011. Um, I don't remember what the law was, but there was a regulation. I'm, I don't know if it's still intact, but that um, foreclosures could not be purchased by any investment uh, companies until after they had been on the market for 90 days. And so we were really the only people that had come to look at this house um, to buy it at the time because people weren't really buying homes, like not like people, people weren't really buying homes. Investment companies were buying homes, but not like normal people. Um, but we put down the earnest money anyways, because we realized with the timeline that it was going to open up into that period where investment, uh, companies were going to be allowed to start, uh, potentially bringing in offers on this. And so we decided to put some earnest money down. So that way they, um, the bank knew that we were serious. We really wanted the house, um, and all of that. So you don't, you don't always have to necessarily put earnest money down, but it can be really, really good if you are serious about the home. Um, and then typically that earnest money, um, if the offer is accepted and all of that, then the earnest money will, um, be included, uh, will be counted as part of your down payment money. And so let's talk about escrow. Es escrow comes up a lot, um, in my conversations on Instagram when I do my money Q and A sessions, um, on Mondays through my um, Instagram stories. Escrow is this kind of, it's like a separate bank account that the bank will set up for you. And what will happen is that your home insurance and your property taxes will be paid from that escrow account. Now, this isn't an account that you have to set up or anything like that. The bank will do this for you when they set up um, your mortgage and all of that. And you don't even have to, for most banks anyway, so some banks might be a little different, but um, most of the time that, that escrow payment is gonna be included with your mortgage payment. So always make sure that you're reading every little thing that's gonna be included in with your mortgage payment. A lot of people think that that whenever you know they see this home price and then they figure out what their mortgage payment's gonna be, they think, oh, it's gonna be super low, great this is wonderful. We can afford it. But then they forget to take into account the home insurance premium and the property taxes that, um, will be coming out as, in the form of escrow, um, or, and PMI if they don't end up putting 20% down. And so those are important things to remember, um, because they do impact what your monthly mortgage payment will be. Um, but like I said, the escrow account is just a separate account. The bank will set up for you. And what will happen is that the bank, the bank will actually pay your home insurance premium and your, um, property tax, um, payment from that escrow account. So they pay it for you. But what, what is happening is that you, um, now you're not doing this, you're just making your monthly mortgage payment, but the bank is taking that portion that's going to escrow and they're putting it into your escrow account and they're building up that escrow account over time. So then that way they can pay from there. Now I will tell you that if say your property taxes go up or your home insurance premium goes up and there's not enough money in there 
to, um, that you don't have enough money in your escrow account to pay that bill. The bank will pay it for you, but then you, they will adjust your escrow payment. And, um, they will, a lot of times they will offer you like, Hey, you can pay a lump sum fee. One time we had to pay $900. We had to pay a lump sum fee of $900, or we could have stretched it out. Um, but it was going to jack our mortgage payment up even way higher. So I just decided to pay the lump sum $900 fee and not have to mess with recalibrating everything just to deal with a much higher mortgage payment. But that is typically how escrow works. Like I said, for, um, for most banks, there's not anything you're going to have to do. The bank will just do it for you. So now I'll tell you some things that you consider, um, when you are looking to buy a home. Um, I am not a realtor and I've bought this home, but, <laughs> um, these are just some things that are very, very important. Cause I will tell you that when we went looking for homes way the hack back when, um, there was a lot of things that, um, looking back now, I'm so grateful. Like we had literally passed, um, earlier this week, we had passed one of the houses that my husband and I had, uh, looked at when we were looking to buy a home. Um, gosh, what, nine years ago now. And, um, that house is like in not a great area. It's just, I'm so thankful that we didn't go with that house. Um, it just would not have been a good option for our family. Um, and so these are just some things that I've kind of learned. Um, you know, I learned through that process and I've learned it just being married to a um, professional home remodeler. So these are just some things to think about. Obviously the first big thing with the house is location, 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 right? Like you do not want to buy a home that's in a not desirable area. You want to be careful that you don't buy a home in an area that is becoming heavily commercialized because then that's going to end up uh, pushing sort of the residential area out of the way. And you could be living across the way from a circle K or something, um, which maybe that's what you want. I don't know. But th these are just things to think about. So really pay attention to the location of the home that you're looking to buy, as well as make sure you're paying attention to the bones of the house. Um, so if you have not seen my home tour video, I'm going to link to it in the description of this video so you can actually see the full tour of my home. Um, but what I'll say is that when I first walked in this home, y'all, there was rats living in it there was just all sorts of things that were wrong with it. I mean, it just, oh, it was box. It was boxy. That window right there actually did not exist. Um, the fireplace was the, like the seventies flagstone fire, um, uh, stone instead of the stack stone that we have now. Um, and there's just all, it was just all sorts of, there's so many things that were wrong with this house. It wasn't even funny. Um, and I did not want to buy it. Like I was like, this is a heck no. I was like, nope. Nope. I'm done. I'm done. Nope. Not buying this one. Um, but my husband convinced me and he kept talking about the bones of the house are good. All I need are good bones to work with. And I didn't really get what he meant by that. Y'all. I really didn't. Um, but now being married, as long as we have now, I, I understand what he means. Like as long as the structure of the home is good and the floor plan, the existing floor plan of the home makes sense. Like it's not super, super weird where you got to like really get creative to figure out a way to fix it. Um, but as long as the structure's there, um, you know, all of that's there, you can do a lot with it. You know, you, it doesn't have to be this perfect home as long as the bones are good. And like I said, you don't want weird floor plans. Um, I've had some friends that have bought some homes that have very strange floor plans and then they've tried to remodel their homes and they're, there's no way to really remodel them in a way that makes sense because the, the floor plan was so weird that it's like they almost got to take down exterior walls and change the, almost have to rebuild the house in order to make it make any sense. So avoid that. <laughs> make sure you get a home with a really good floor plan as well as make sure that you um, check out the schools that um, the home is zoned for. Even if you um, are planning to private school, kid, your private school, your kids or homeschool, your kids, or you're not planning to have any kids at all. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, as far as resale value goes, you want to make sure that you're moving into a good school district. Um, this is just really important. It'll keep your property values up. Um, yes, it does kind of make your property taxes more, but your property values go up and, um, that can be very helpful. Just saying. Other things to consider are, are you going to be on septic or sewer um, or on city sewer? If you are on septic, which is what we are here at my house um, and is what I actually grew up on, um, you need to know this little tidbit of information because I didn't know this and we had our septic tank back up. So I'm just sharing the wealth of information, y'all, is that your septic tank should be pumped out every three to five years. So definitely one of the questions that you want to ask if you are trying to buy a home with septic is when was the last time that it was pumped and inspected? That's just kind of some very important stuff. So that way, you know, um, 
uh, you know, when you're going to have to have it pumped again um, and all of that. And as well as you want to know, um, you want to get the plot lines so, or, so you know where the field lines are. You want to make sure that you um, are given that information so you know where the field lines are because the last thing you want is to have a big dump truck who's going to be delivering gravel in your backyard to do some nice pretty landscaping or something and they run over those field lines and crush them. That's the last thing you want. That's a very big expensive repair, guys. So just some things for you to think about. All right. So some other last minute things that you think about and consider when you are looking to buy a home is how much money do you already have saved? Do you have enough money saved to put down at bare minimum that three and a half percent of a home's value? If not, I highly encourage you to get started on that right now because here's the thing. Um, you typically, again, this is with most banks, but not all banks, but typically um, you're going to need to have the money that you are planning to use as your down payment money in your account for 60 days before, before you actually um, try to get this mortgage. Um, so that's really important to know. So that's why you want to make sure that you have your money saved up and it's saved and ready to go 60 days prior before you actually plan to start doing this home buying process. You also need to be aware of how much debt you currently have. Um, and this includes any um, deferred debts like student loans. So if you are currently in school or you just graduated from college and you have not, and your student loans have not yet actually taken effect, uh, please keep in mind that uh, though that number is going to be included um, whenever they um, do your debt to income ratio. Um, when we bought our house, I was actually still in college. Um, I had not graduated yet. And as so I had like a year to go, but they still included in um, my, our debt to income ratio, they included uh, my student loans. So you need to keep that in mind um, that this includes deferred debt as well as the debts that you um, are aware of and currently know about. And so what you want to make sure with your debts is that you have paid down um, your debts significantly. I highly recommend going to Credit Karma linked it to them in the description of this video. They, it's a free site. You can go there and actually look to see um, what your, to kind of see how overall your um, credit health quote unquote is. Um, I, I recommend this um, as well so that you know your credit score because it is important to know your credit score because your credit score actually dictates um, what your interest rate is going to be. I will include a link in the description of this video to that as well. So you can see um, what the current interest rates are for what FICO score you have. So that's why it's important to know which credit score is because then you'll know um, what interest rate you qualify for. And so this, and this is, and this is important to know because you can take action now and getting those debts paid down um, and making the improvements that you need to, to your credit score, as well as to that debt to income ratio and saving the money you need for your, your down payment now before you start the home buying process. Process. And speaking of credit, you need to know what's on your credit reports. And I said reports because you need to pull your credit report from all three bureaus. Go to annualcreditreport.com and you can pull your credit report for free from all three of these bureaus. Um, and you need to go through those reports with a fine tooth comb. Anything on there that does not belong to you, you need to report it immediately. Um, any bad debts on there that you maybe weren't aware of, you need to figure out how you can get those off your credit report. Like call up the creditors, whatever you need to do, um, offer a settlement, um, whatever needs to happen in order to get them off your credit report, you need to do that. And you need to do this before you start the whole mortgage application process. Because the reality is, is that there's going to be an underwriter um, with this mortgage company that's going to go through your credit report with a fine tooth comb, and they're going to dig through all this stuff. And the last thing you want is to one, have a whole bunch of back and forth about some stupid $5 Thing that's in collections, right? Like if it's just going to cost you a phone call to hand somebody $5, make the phone call and hand somebody $5 and get it off your credit report, right? Um, <laughs> so, or, or if there's things on there that aren't yours, you need to know that and get it taken off and get it rectified before you go through this process. So you don't get denied for this mortgage for something that wasn't even really yours to begin with. So again, just make sure that you are fully aware of not just your credit score, but also your credit, what your credit reports actually say. Um, this is important so that way you can uh, make sure that you can get the best interest rate as well as that you can actually get approved for the mortgage that you want to get approved for. Um, and the other thing that you're definitely going to need to know is what is the income that you actually bring in every single month? I have lots of friends that can tell me exactly how much money they earn an hour. And I, and I have friends that can tell me exactly how much their annual salary is supposed to be um, before taxes. But no one can ever really tell me how much it is that they actually bring home every single month. You need to know this. If you do not know exactly how much money you typically bring in on an average month, 
you need to tally that up. You need to get all your paycheck stubs for one whole month or, you know, however you get paid, look in your bank statement for all the deposits that you, um, that you've made for that month and tally them up. So you know how much your monthly income is. And here's why, because the big rule of thumb with mortgage payments is that your mortgage payment should never, ever, 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 ever be more than 30% of your income. I would actually argue that you want it as low as possible. You do not want this mortgage payment to eat up a ton of your income. And the reason I say that is because if the, the mortgage payment eats up too much of your if it eats up too much of your monthly income, then you're not going to have enough income left over to keep paying your bills as well, save money, um, and just to have money to, to, to live with, right? You're not going to have enough money left over for those things. And so that's why it's very important. <coughs> That's why it's very, very important that you know exactly um, how much money you bring home every single month so you can figure out what that 30% is of your uh, monthly income so you don't exceed that number when it comes to your mortgage payment. Again, this is why it's so very vital and so important that you know... That's why it's so vital and so important that you know your money and that you make the decisions that um, are best for you and your family and you don't just rely on someone else to tell you what you can and you cannot afford. Uh -huh. Okay, so there you have it. All the boring in and outs of buying a home. Um, so if you have um, any tips that you wanna share um, with others um, who are watching this video um, on some home buying tips, uh, put them in the comments below so we kind of share the wealth of uh, uh, of information and knowledge and my daughter is now currently attacking me. Um, so, but I hope that this was helpful, helpful to you guys. Um, <laughs> uh, and I will see y'all next time. Oh my God.